According according to the story, he gets a blonde uh, piece of hair. A couple years later, they finally get an analysis done on it. And the mitochondrial sequence uh, of the DNA, uh, that was done under strict laboratory conditions using polymerase chain reaction protocols, revealed that the hair had, quote, strange and unusual DNA sequence, end quote, with five consistent substitutions from human consensus so rare as to be almost unknown throughout the human genome. The DNA showed a combination found only in a small percentage of the population of the British Isles of Basque, northern Spain, combined with a rare Chinese Mongol type found in a tiny population group in Taiwan. In short, it's not possible for a normal biological human to have two separate types of mitochondrial DNA, as that means the person must have had two separate biological mothers, not grandmothers, two separate mothers. Now, here's why I find this evidence interesting because I've recently uh, learned about uh, different types of genetic manipulations that are now possible. I believe this story is from like the 90s, which makes this even more interesting because um, uh, we can make designer babies now. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but um, uh, you can, if you want a kid with, let's say, you know, you want a kid with blue eyes. Uh, but you don't have blue eyes and your partner doesn't have blue eyes. You can now uh, choose to have a child with blue eyes. Do you know how they do this? Either you, John, uh, Nick. Are you going to tell us? All right. Well, they do it by taking a third mother and t that has blue eyes and they snip out that piece of the genome um, and, and they then snip it into the child, essentially uh, giving the mitochondrial DNA uh, of two mothers, exactly what this case is describing. Essentially, we might have evidence here of designer babies uh, or, the, or the, the, the type of science that we currently are using for designer babies, um, except it was documented in the 90s. I find that interesting as someone who actually is willing to look at the data. So... Um, uh, you know, this is basically really good proof of genetic manipulation, as you were talking about, um, John. Because, like I said, we know how to do that. That is a known... I mean, when, when I looked into it, I didn't see anything about that, about the information that you're providing. Well, what I saw is that there was just... Um, <clears throat> and, you know, it wasn't, like, definitive either. It was basically... <clears throat> they said that, that it was, like, just strange... It was, like, at best, it was strange coincidence. <clears throat> Um, yeah, well, uh, we are like we have this DNA and type of DNA in thousands of years or something that was, and that that was basically the the end of the of that uh, research. Yeah, the first the first time I heard about it, you know, they're like, oh, it, it's really rare looking. Yeah, it's easy to be like, yeah, so what? You know what I mean? And I was kind of the same way too. But what caught my attention, like I said, I'm gonna have to probably dig deeper on this one to verify that this isn't just someone talking out their ass or some sort of mistake or something. But if in fact, you know, they do have conclusive evidence here that it's not just rare, but that there's, uh, there's two different types of mitochondrial DNA from two different mothers that, that that's a fact that it couldn't possibly be one mother. Um, that is a really big deal. Cause like I said, uh, we know how to do that. Um, uh, and it absolutely is not natural. It's it's a known form of, of genetic manipulation that we're currently doing, by the way. And then that's really interesting. And, and if that is the case, then I would want to really do a deeper dive into when this when they got this hair sample, because, you know, then I'm going to have to start asking questions like, you know, um, you know, if we didn't if we didn't publicly have this technology until, say, like 2010, but this hair sample was analyzed in 2005 that's pretty interesting because this is a this is basically like we actually have evidence of someone uh, genetic uh, apparently genetically modifying someone uh, with a piece of technology a genetic modification technology that didn't officially exist until five years later. That's what you can say categorically as a fact. Now whether or not it was aliens or just a weird case of someone somehow magically getting. 
a, a hair sample from an actual genetically modified human being uh, that shouldn't exist at that moment in time. So like that would lead me down the path of essentially someone intentionally leaking information about uh, this type of research bef before it's publicly known.